I'm Belinda Ray with Greater Portland Council of Governments, and I am talking today about GP COG's efforts to support our municipal members in welcoming new Mainers from 2019 to 2024. So just to ground us in the numbers, I think we all recall that in 2019, we had our first big influx of people coming to resettle in Maine, asylum seekers, looking to find their new home. And at that time, we had a high census of 240 people at the Portland Expo at one point, and we managed to house them all quickly, and we kind of thought, we're done. This probably won't happen again. But as you look at this chart, you can see that people have continued to choose Maine as the place where they want to settle and make a new home. And this chart shows that going into June of 2022, the numbers continued to increase, and that trend has continued in 2023 and in 2024. Now this presents a challenge to our members. It can place a strain, financial and human resources, on municipalities. For instance, in 2019, the city of Portland had to transform the Expo into a temporary shelter for asylum seekers. And then that happened again in 2023 because there wasn't enough housing and there weren't shelter beds and so the municipality had to open up a lot of spaces, which obviously takes some general assistance money and some finance and human resources from the city. But while this presents a challenge, we also recognize that it's an opportunity. And it's an opportunity for uh, one big reason. Maine has challenging demographics. So just to quickly go over what those are, First of all, deaths exceed births in Maine. Between 2010 and 2021, we actually lost 22,000 people. So without immigration, our state would be losing people every year. And that gap has been increasing between births and deaths. We're having more deaths and fewer births. We also have one of the oldest populations. We are the oldest state on a per capita basis, and we also have more people in the older generations than other states across the United States. And this, of course, leads to labor shortages as people retire out of the workforce and there are not folks to replace them in those jobs. We wind up with a very tight labor market and we need people to fill them. In July of 2023, Maine had 43,000 jobs to fill two and a half jobs for every unemployed person eligible to work in the state. So to welcome new Americans into our communities and help integrate them into the workforce, GPCOG has been working on three tracks. We have been looking at immediate solutions, what can we do right away, intermediate, um, what, will, what will help us get through this situation? And then long term, what is the final fix? How do we create a permanent solution that will put us in a good position going forward? So I will start with the immediate solutions, the things that we have done right away. And so we'll go back to 2019, when we had so many people at the Expo in Portland that needed housing quickly, GP COG brought together its municipal members, the Metro Regional Coalition, um, kind of put out the bat signal to the community, as we like to say. And we got a response from our municipal members, from the Maine Immigrants Rights Coalition, the faith community, other community partners. And we were able to establish a host homes program that matched folks who needed the housing with folks who had housing, had space in their homes, uh, had a place that they could share, and that was very successful. It helped to house about 150 out of the expo very quickly. In 2023, when the expo was opened again, the city of Portland contacted GP Cog and said, could you start up the host homes program again? We really need assistance. And at that time, we at GP Cog were aware that there was another really great program in place. The Quality Housing Coalition, which is a nonprofit here in Portland, uh, already had a program called Project Home, where they work with landlords in the area and work to match them with folks 
that might have trouble finding rentals because of language barriers or things like that. Um, and so Quality Housing Coalition was matching folks with landlords already and providing a year-long lease and full support during that lease, both for the landlords and for the tenants. And so we, GP Cog, brought them together with the city of Portland, and we found a way to wrap the host homes program into their existing program. So they expanded it, that it was not just landlords with properties and empty apartments. They extended it to people who had short-term rentals, people who had space in their homes, and provided the same service offered to make the match and then provide the year-long support. And they have a really great record. They have a 95% rate of success with their leases. So we were really happy to fold host homes into their existing program, and that was really helpful this year. Another thing GPCOG does well and has done a lot of is bringing people together to discuss issues, doing research, sharing information, and we did a couple of those things in the immediate solutions bucket as well. One of them is hosting an Eggs and Issues, where we talked with local leaders about welcoming new Mainers to the workforce, what we needed to do, what the barriers were, uh, to help get that information and that discussion going out in the community. We also did a lot of research and worked with Maine Immigrant Rights Coalition and came up with a proposal for transitional housing as a serious need in our housing stock in Maine. So we have been housing folks temporarily in shelters, in hotels, and in hotels in particular, it gets very expensive. So we put together a white paper on transitional housing, the need for it, the, the why we need it, how we could do it, and we got that out into community as well for discussion. So those are some of the immediate. Intermediate, in 2023, we partnered with Developers Collaborative and the City of Portland and Maine Immigrants Rights Coalition through our charitable nonprofit arm, the Center for Regional Prosperity. We opened 166 Riverside, which was a former warehouse. It was redeveloped into a 180 bed transitional housing facility for asylum seekers. So we went for the grant with Developers Collaborative, got the funding, and helped to stand that facility up. And in standing up the facility, we organized a day of service at 166 Riverside. And many of our members will be very familiar with this because many of our members participated. You can see um, Mayor Mike Foley and Falmouth Town Manager, Nathan Poor and Julie Rosenbach of South Portland in these pictures. Um, this was something that brought about 50 volunteers from 11 different municipalities together for a day of service. And this day of service made a very big difference in the length of time it took from getting a certificate of occupancy to moving people in. And without this boost, uh, the city of Portland would have had to take a little bit longer to get that facility open. So we're really proud of that work as well. So long-term solutions. Um, first, I wanna take you back to 2022 and look at what our system looked like at that time. So then someone would arrive, um, an asylum seeker, family, individual from another place, they would come and they would typically present at the city of Portland family shelter. Now the family shelter was already full and so from there, they would be um, placed in a hotel. And at one point, we had 13 different hotels in seven different communities. So it was a very scattered system. It was insecure. The hotel rooms weren't always available from one week, one month to the next, um, and very expensive as well. And from these hotels, that was really just kind of a holding pattern until people could cycle back into the family shelter where there were services that could help connect them to what they needed in order to get settled and get work authorization and get applications in. And then from there they would be housed and it was a very long process. Then we proposed a transitional housing solution with transitional housing built campus style. And the idea here is that you would have 200 units of housing with community space 
And that is a place where people could live. They would have their own kitchens because another thing in the hotels is that there are not kitchens and the food becomes very expensive as well. Uh, so people would live in the transitional housing and they would have the community space where services could be provided. It would make it so much easier for service providers to find folks that need the services, get them in one place. It's just a, an economy of scale that it creates. So we put this solution out in the out in the ether <laughs> and uh, propose that as a solution. And in doing so, we also developed a fund to try to help catalyze the creation of this transitional housing. And that is the Safe in Maine Fund, which has already raised over $200,000, which is standing at the ready to support the creation of transitional housing and to help catalyze it. We have, in fact, looked at a few parcels that sort of appeared as though they would work, turned out not being workable, but because we have this funding, we've been able to examine the parcels and do some of the pre-development work that is not often funded by grants and loans for housing development. So we have that fund ready, and through the work we've done with Safe in Maine, we were able to develop a concept design which gave us an idea of what this sort of transitional housing campus could look like, the configuration, and also the costs. And by doing some of the analysis of costs, we were able to compare it to what we are doing right now, either putting people in hotels. Um, if an individual municipality does that, they do that without a negotiated rate. They're often paying market price for that hotel room. And even when the state or another partner is able to negotiate a rate with a hotel, we still found that a transitional housing community would have substantial savings. And through all of this work and our work with our partners and the Metro Regional Coalition and the Maine Immigrant Rights Coalition, we put together a bill to go to the legislature, LD 1721, an act to create transitional housing communities for homeless populations in the state. That went in to the legislature, the 131st legislature, in the first session in 2023. It was carried over to 2024. It was amended, but I am very happy to say that at the beginning of 2024, it was signed. The amended version was signed by the governor, and that's significant because to have the state signing a, a bill, a resolution that is directing the state to go out and investigate this and come back with a plan and a cost proposal to establish transitional housing is a big move from where we were several years ago when we had no plan in place and a lot of people weren't thinking about how to make it a state solution. And now I think we have it in the hands of the state. There's a lot of hope with the state's Office of New Americans that has also been established that we might get to the place where we have a long-term solution. And we're very happy with the work that we have done to help get us to that point. So that is what I have today. Here's a slide that, that uh, summarizes what we have done in the immediate, intermediate, and long-term areas to help our municipalities welcome new Mainers and welcome them to our communities and integrate them into our workforce.